finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Yo, yo, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, and I'm going to start by recapping Barrett Jackson's Scottsdale 2023. Basically a recap, but out of the 11 1960s Lincolns that I'm going to focus on for this series, right? So there's going to be multiple videos. Make sure you please subscribe. I'm going to focus on 61 through 69, which is primarily what we talk about on the podcast. But out of those 11 cars, you're going to be amazed at how much money those 11 Lincolns, convertibles and sedans combined, brought in terms of the overall uh, purchase prices which includes a commission fee or a buyer's commission as well. So I'm going to start this video is just one car, right? So we're going to kind of, you know, keep it light and we're going to go through one at a time. Now, these 11 cars, believe it or not, brought in $1.7 million. So a million seven forty four six hundred. So if you Take the average sales price for those 11 Lincolns. It was 158 grand, 600, which is just totally insane, right? So I know a lot of you guys were seeing some of my posts, probably thinking, wow, some of the cars went for more than you thought. Some didn't go for as much. And believe me, I'm going to go through all 11 cars just one at a time. This is just high level. Uh, I'm going to start from the bottom of the 11 from a price perspective. So we'll kind of steadily get up to the record car for 2023. And you may be surprised at some of the cars that I'm going to cover. Now this car here, the 62 Lincoln Continental sedan was lot 542. You can see the VIN there. This sold for 44,000. Now, again, all of the prices that I'm going to go, um, uh, go through, they are always going to include uh, the uh, buyer commission. I call it just a buyer's fee, right, which is baked into this price. Now, what I want to call out is um, I know some people have have commented and said, hey, you know, I, I, I wish you could just do the hammer price. Unfortunately, out of all of these Lincolns, I think I saw – I may have seen one cross the block. That may have been it. A couple of them they cut away, which we'll talk about later um, when we get into it. A little bit of controversy there, certainly, um, in my opinion. This car, uh, to get all the prices, will include. So the price is here. So I want to, before I mention this car, I, d- I don't watch these live. Uh, I do have access to them. Some of my buddies will text me photos and stuff. But when a lot of these were going, I was doing other things. So I just unfortunately didn't get a chance to see it live. So I didn't have the hammer price. Uh, Many of you have broken down in the comments and kind of said, hey, how much goes, you know, for for the commission and things like that. Look, I'm not going to break that down. I'm just giving you this number here, which the hammer price is a little lower. And let's say it's, I don't know, 10 or 15% gets added on. And the person that's buying that car um, is then is is then paying that elevated price. So like if it hammers at forty thousand, they're not paying forty thousand. They're actually paying more because it's going to add that fee in there. That's just the way it works. But this sixty two Lincoln Continental white car, we know it has the four thirty. Um, it says it right here. It's got the dual range automatic trans. Uh, it talks about power adjustable front seat. That's all standard electric windows, power steering, four wheel drum brakes, which is uh, correct for that year. The rear hinge doors, which, you know, coach door, suicide doors, the push button radio, 14 inch wheels are correct. Uh, The car was acquired by the current owner in 2022. So probably a flip, maybe someone bought it for a good price. They just wanted to unload it. Maybe they didn't want to build it, whatever the case is there. But I think that's that's key to, th- to think about is, you know, was this car in a collection for 20 years maybe going to be worth more because it was cared for versus someone that just picked a car up, you know, off Facebook Marketplace. They're bringing it to auction. They're going to flip it. That's what I think you're going to see here. Uh, Fort Gen Continental, kind of the Wikipedia type copy and paste stuff here. And uh, Lester White Walls, no big deal there. Um, kind of goes in here. All this is just basic stuff. Now, I did, and if you watch one of my recent videos, which I think was like a preview to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2023, I talked about I'm not a huge fan of their site and how sometimes little the information is that that's there. Now, 
that's not a slight on Barrett Jackson. That's often what the seller provides. So if I was sitting at home and I was looking at these photos and I didn't have a buddy or a friend or a club mate that could go and visit the, the, you know, Barrett Jackson and Scottsdale, if I couldn't get there and I couldn't look at a car, I would be very, very reluctant to buy anything, especially a Lincoln over the phone bidding with no eyes on it, right? Because if we look at this, we're going to just scroll through these really quick in the first round. There's not a lot to look at. There's a couple of things that we'll be able to glean from these photos. Like I've said before, and I said in the preview, there's no underneath the car photos. I mean, the stuff that I've been going over for some time, you know, where's the photo underneath the deck lid, you know, to see is the deck lid rusted out? Um, You know, where are some of the detailed photos? The description you just saw um, isn't very good. You know, there's just not a lot of detail. So it's no slight against Barrett Jackson. They're a business and they're there to bring in the money. They're going to make their piece. You know, it's televised. They've got, you know, it's kind of turning into this like almost like a mini SEMA with all of the companies going there and stuff. I mean, it's a huge moneymaker. But I would caution anyone, don't get caught up in the hype, especially if you're looking for a car. Now, granted, there were some people that got some very good deals, so we'll talk about that when we get to those cars. But just don't feel like you've got to get, you know, if you see one of these cars, you just got to get it here because oftentimes you're going to be able to find better deals elsewhere, right? Not all the time, okay? And especially if you're looking for a resto mod, we've seen some up and down prices, but again, we'll get to that a little bit later. So what we see here is the 62. We know it's a 62 because it says it, but also because it's the rectangle, what I call the rectangle grill. Uh, it's that di- that's differentiated from 61 and 63. So it's very clear when you see those longer rectangles, that's a 62. White is a classy color. You look at it and it says, you know, you kind of say, hey, it's got the hubcaps. It's got the bias ply looking tires that you'll probably end up replacing. But these, you know, kind of look cool for nostalgia. Uh, People like the 61 to 63 because it has the curved glass. You know, some people really don't like in 64 and 65. uh, They went to the flat glass. And, you know, a lot of people say it's more classy to have the curved glass. Uh, Not really a fan necessarily of that. I like my 64, 65, but uh, I can certainly see where people say that for sure. There's a front shot there. Uh, we like to kind of look, uh, as I've always said, look here at some of the the the, uh, the spacing and things like that to see, you know, how true is the car from what we can tell. Good front shot there. Um, you know, everything looks like it's in order. Nothing out of the ordinary. Here, uh, you can kind of see original with the 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 wood kind of style trim panels. You know the originality of the interior. That's what I like. I'd rather have it like this than someone that's coming here and dyed a bunch of things. Um, there is a little bit of stuff going on here, so there could be some little things that have been done. But like when I look at the overall look, I kind of go, yeah, it looks you know what I would want. You know something that that everything is there. You've got the manual vent windows. I've kind of talked a couple times. My friend TC, shout out to Teresa Connor, um, one of my 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 fellow Lincoln addicts. Uh, she she helps me a lot. So does Blair, and uh, we were talking back and forth. It kind of gets confusing on what year you could first get the electric. Um, smaller windows here, the vent windows. Uh, some of you guys can chime in as well. I appreciate a couple of you guys, you know, got a lot of knowledge um, and you, you helped me fill in the gap. So uh, that's one that I can never remember. Uh, it's kind of cool to me though, to have the little, um, uh, the manuals, if you will here, because believe it or not, it's one less thing. So uh, there's, there's two switches then basically that aren't going to go bad. And there's two motors, right? One on each side that aren't going to go bad if they're manual. Uh, if if you catch my drift, we can see here these aren't you know the correct seat belts. Um, I forget in sixty two if you could even get as an option the front seat belts. I know the re- rears. I don't believe you could. Um, again, not a deal breaker. I just like to point this out. Um, I would rather have safety. I've said this before. So uh, certainly, if somebody you know just went to one of the the companies that makes seat belts, I'd rather have those in there than nothing at all. Uh, Oftentimes, I'll see the kick panels missing. These are here, so that's good. Again, it's kind of just in this shot, the little bit that we can see is that the stuff is there. Um, You can also look at these uh, stainless A-pillars. 
Now on the convertibles like mine, there's a lot. There was often like a little bit of surface rust on these, and you can clean them with the Brasso and the Quadruple Zero steel wool. That Brasso polish um, will will make these shine. These actually look really good. Uh, that's something I kind of like to look at because again, the convertibles typically aren't sealed as well, and um, on those you'll have a little bit of buildup that you can clean up. On a car like this, I like to kind of see like how bad or good do these look. Either they've polished them or the car's kept indoors. Um, so, you know, not really sure. But again, just to kind of call out, these look good. All of these up here, the stainless. Uh, here you can see where there is some white paint um, on these, um, you know, right in here. And this, I don't know, this looks this looks a little off to me. Maybe some overspray, but um, not a deal breaker. But those are the little things you want to look at to kind of get a little bit of insight to, you know, is this, is this like one of the, you know, I think back to the old used cars movie or the old school car lots where, you know, they're pulling the cars in the back and, you know, they've got a guy with the airbrush that's painting little rips in the seats and, you know, doing all those little things. I'm always kind of curious, you know, did someone get a hold of one of these cars and they're kind of covering up with lipstick, so to speak, a bunch of little things, but those, if nothing else, it's just a little bit of mindset into what I'm looking at. And I've kind of shared some of that with you guys in the past. Nothing really going on in this photo, kind of the same thing. We do see the heel pad down here, um, which shows I'm pretty certain this is original carpet. Uh, just a shout out, Jim Wallace in Florida. You know, he makes arguably the best kits uh, for the door panels and seats and carpets. And he, of course, always sews in a heel pad. I believe he gets them reproduced, but um, some of the cheaper carpet kits won't have that heel pad in it. So I like to kind of call that out. Hard to tell if the interior has been redone. I mean, this certainly looks original. And regardless, I love the originality. So to me, this, this I would leave it if, if this was a car that I was looking to buy. Here you've got your kind of money shot with the, the doors open. Uh, again, not really revealing much. Carpet looks good here. Um, I do like to tend to look at the bottom of the rear seat compared to the floor because this right here typically is always going to be original and it will give you a little bit of insight to like if this was really faded down here or brand new and this was really faded, it maybe give you a little bit of insight into, um, you know, had some of the things been changed. Okay, this is where there's a little bit of wonkiness going on. So I'm all for whatever people want to do to their own cars. That's no problem. You guys know I like custom. I like stock. This is going to drive the purist insane because in the early 60s, so I believe it was in 66, 67, one of the two, I believe the blocks came blue. But rest assured, 61 through 65, the block is always black. This appears that more than likely this car or this this engine was rebuilt. It was out of the car, my assumption. And you can see when they painted it, they literally took a bright blue paint and they painted everything from the expansion tank, the fuel pump, the, the um, valve covers, everything. Okay. So more than likely... I'm guessing maybe the engine was rebuilt that was on a stand and someone just like psh, shot the whole thing. Now you could get in here and paint some of this stuff. I, I wouldn't see someone going through all this effort if this engine was in the car. Um, th th that's not a bad thing. This could be a rebuilt engine. It could be perfectly fine, but I'm just calling out that this blue color. Um, I love blue. Okay. And this is a little too much blue for me. Okay. So I would just say, be cautious. If you see, a, you know, an engine that's been painted like this, it, it, it means it's more than likely been out again, not a bad thing. You could have a great engine builder that's, you know, built it or, you know, a regular engine builder in town that's rebuilt the engine and it's, you know, got hardly any miles on it. That's fine. But I do want to call it out. We can see right here. This is a non AC car because there is no air condition. Um, compressor here we can see the fuel pump is uh not hooked up here so um you can see where they've they've kind of put the line in here it's probably got an electric fuel pump uh this 430 was never on there from the factory i'm 95 percent sure there i've never seen that i highly doubt that that was there this is how the 62 looks you know with the firewall and things like that of course there's no air conditioning so there is a lot of space in there uh, we can see right here it has the single master cylinder, uh, which, again, I've reinforced. You would really want to go to a dual as well. Um, we can see it also, just to reinforce, this fan is the non-clutch fan. 
So when you have this fan, which I actually had one of these on my 64, although it was an air-conditioned car, someone over the course of time had put a non-AC fan on it. And uh, my understanding, and some of you guys have chimed in here as well, I believe, is the shroud. And there's one particular guy, and I thank him for always commenting. The shroud was not installed on the non-AC car. So that nice shroud that I've talked about in the past, um, there's no shroud for that. And again, the um, uh, the clutch, the, there's no clutch fan on it. So it's not really needed if you don't have the AC. Uh, you can see the radiator has been upgraded. So it has an aluminum radiator, um, which is which is fantastic. Uh, at least it's been done. Everything else in here kind of looks standard to what you're normally going to see in a Lincoln uh, you can always get in here and clean this up and whatnot. Just a re, uh, a side shot from the opposite side. Again, in here, it looks like some of this has maybe been shot over the course of time with some paint. It is kind of hard to tell, but um, not a deal breaker, certainly, but just something to call out. There's the front three-quarter shot. Always like to look in here. This is called the dog leg. This little area here, this doesn't look bad. This is typical on how you're going to see. Sometimes you'll have... Um, some of the lower door panel caught in here or a seat belt or something, but th the car itself, from what I can tell in these photos does look, um, solid, get a Kennedy, uh, which is typical on some of these cars, you know, kind of quote Kennedy cars, uh, a bumper sticker there. This all looks pretty solid to me. And then you've got the antenna for 61, 62 was in the back. Uh, I have said also in the past that in 62, the early year or the early models, they do sometimes have the cover over the key lock. This one doesn't have that. Uh, here we can also see it has the single reservoir. But if someone did pull this engine out and have it rebuilt, I would, you know, have questions about it. You know, how long ago was it rebuilt? Who rebuilt it? You know, was it a, a full rebuild or, you know, what, what happened um, with it? If they could share that. So basically, looks pretty solid. My my the feedback that I would give you is this is a four this is basically sold for forty four grand. I mean that's that's a that's a good amount for a sedan. Now have we seen sedans sell for good amounts? Absolutely. There was one from the company was it Hammer was it called Hammer and Wrench the sixty four that I covered on the channel that sold for thirty six thousand. I think it was a sixty four. They they had done a lot of stuff to it. Um, this car looks solid. You know, maybe the person that's going to buy it is going to pull the engine and resto mod it. We don't know. But um, what do you guys think? Was this a good buy for a '62 sedan white, forty four grand? I think it's on the high side. Now you could argue and say, yeah, the cars are going up in value. Certainly, absolutely, totally get it. Someone could have been caught up in the hype. Maybe it's the guy that's got money that says, hey, let me get a rock-solid car. Or maybe they looked at it underneath if it's solid. And they maybe they're going to resto mod it. Maybe they're going to restore it. I don't know. But I'm going to show you this. My buddy, this is a bonus. My buddy, um, who I helped answer a bunch of questions on this car, he bought this car a couple years ago at 65 Okay, he got a good deal on it. Fair deal. I'll say a fair deal. And uh, he had the timing setup done and some other things mechanically ran drive, super nice car, 65, untouched for the most part, other than what his mechanic did with the timing setup and those things that you really want to do. He just sold this car for 25 grand. Okay. So shout out to Charles. He was getting ready to move and he didn't want to take the car and he loved the car, but you know, it was just time for him to cash out. So there are nice cars out there that can be had. Now you could argue and say 25 grand is a lot for a sedan. And I would say in many cases, absolutely. Yes. But for a nice sedan, I've known one of my buddies has sold one for 30 K for a sedan. I've seen them sell again, that other, um, 64, I think was 36 grand. Um, they're starting to get past the 20,000 mark and there are some nice ones out there. So my advice to you as I close this video down is you got to be ready to buy. Oftentimes, you know, you're kind of like, I want to buy one of these cars. And then, you know, you know, you have the mindset that you're going to buy one. But then you, you know, you just maybe you don't have the funds right readily available. You can't pull the trigger. You can't say yes right this second. You, you know, in 2023 and beyond, you got to be ready to buy. But you also have to do your due diligence and find a nice car, right? You don't want to maybe buy this car for forty-four grand and get it home and start with a 
screwdriver, like, wow, this thing's rusted out, right? Again, not saying that this car is, but you want to start with a good foundation. Trust me, because even if this is a nice car, like Teresa Connor, TC always says, they always need something, whether it's brake work, you know, the drive shaft needing to be balanced, um, you know, maybe tires on this if they're buyer's ply, you know, maybe you don't like the blue engine, you want to pull it out and paint it back the factory color, whatever the case, maybe there's rust, you just never know. But again, they always need something, even if they're in good condition, let's be honest. So um, happy looking for your Lincolns. Thank you guys for all the support. Uh, I really appreciate it. I wouldn't be here uh, doing this if uh, if it wasn't for you guys. Uh, I will tell you again with the next 10 that I'm going to hit, there's going to be some surprises. I had some surprises when I was looking at the website, some ups, some downs, but we live another day and uh, we do better the next time. So stay on the rise, y'all. Appreciate you. We out of here. Peace.